Barnes. On behalf of the town of Cardston, Mayor Maggie Cronin, town council, I'd like to welcome you, each of you today to our annual Remembrance Day service. <clears throat> I especially want to welcome the veterans, members of the Canadian Armed Forces, RCMP, <coughs> Cub Scouts, and other honored, honored guests. It's great to have you here, the families and the guides. <clears throat> especially want to welcome our guest speaker, the Radine Honorable, and I'll welcome her a little bit later. Thank you for your attendance at today's service. <clears throat> The program will follow as follows. We'll have our intermediate song, Let Us Walk in Peace, following which <clears throat> Pastor Roy Peason will offer our invitation. Thank you. Thank you. 
honor to be here. Uh, Thirteen years ago, I started dating a woman named Laura. And uh, 12 years ago, I married her. And while I was dating her, I opened up the door for her. I was a man of chivalry, at least I tried to be, she might tell you otherwise. But after we get married, uh, sometimes things like that, we take our wife for granted. And as I'm reminded this morning, and see the memorials in front, and I read the roll call in your uh, brochure, I'm reminded that how often we take things dear to us uh, for granted, namely our freedom. May we never do that. Freedom was bought with the price, the cost. And so I've been asked to pray and thank God for our soldiers and for, um, for him. And I also want to take time to pray for our leaders, uh, soldiers serving here and abroad, and those who have fallen, and also to pray for our leaders that are leading. And so let's pray. God Almighty, uh, maker of heaven and earth, we just uh, thank you so much for the country that we live in. And may we never, ever take it for granted how you have guarded and guided. Oh Lord, and I just want to thank you for our soldiers, those that are here in front and, and those that are serving you abroad and, and at home to keep peace and to make it possible for us to live in freedom. God, we thank you so much. And every day we get up and we, we live in a country that is free. And I just want to thank you so much, God. And I just pray, especially for our leaders right now, that you would grant them the wisdom and that you would give them the understanding and the strength and the courage to lead in a way that is honoring, honoring to you. Father, I also want to thank you for Emmanuel, who died so that we might have freedom too. God, thank you so much for the country that we live in, and for so many that have lost their lives fighting to keep our country, the country in which it is. Thank you so much, Lord. In your name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Peterson. It was wonderful. It was I would like to thank our CES choir this time for a beautiful song and for their conductor and pianist in the Burwell and Lori and Williams. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. <clears throat> We'd like this time to have an intermediate song, Let Us Walk in Peace, by Pastor Ford Sims and see if choir will wrap that up.
wonderful to have such talent in our community. It's, it's neat to watch our choirs and bands and uh, do so well and, and get uh, provincial and national recognition. It's just neat. And uh, I'd like to at this time thank the choir, the CHS band, and all their directors for all the uh, wonderful music, the hard work that they do to, to bring this wonderful spirit to us in music. It's wonderful to have each of you here today. It's heartwarming to see how many people are here to uh, remember those who have given so much that we might have the freedoms that we have, that we have today. My father spent four and a half years overseas with the Canadian Air Force and, and uh, sacrificed much. He came home, but he wasn't the same man. It took a lot out of his life, but he worked hard to remind me always that me and others like him gave for all that we can have the that we have. So it's wonderful to be able to be here today. At this time, I'd like to announce uh, Following the mayor's uh, welcome, our meeting is on the London, London Area Air by the CHS band. Uh, at this time, we give a great pleasure to, to uh, introduce to you our mayor, Maggie Cronin, and to have her come up and officially welcome uh, everyone at this time. So, Mayor Cronin, please come up. Paxton County Reeve, Fred Lysian Councillors, Paxton Town Councillors, members of the Legion Honor Guard, veterans, members of the military, members of the RCMP, members of the Canadian Border Service Agency, members of emergency services, scouts and guides. Citizens of Carlson and County, invited guests and friends, welcome to this 2013 November 11th Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day is a solemn occasion. We come together that day to commemorate those in the armed force who gave their lives the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom and liberty lest we forget. Around me, you can see on both sides the framed pictures and stories of some of our local Holland heroes. No longer are they just a name on the road wall. On behalf of town and council, I want to recognize former councillor Tim Cole, who along with our town intern, Alex Buzzi, diligently work on this worthwhile project. We still need more information from families and friends of fallen heroes on the honor roll to complete this project. Your help will be appreciated. Remembrance Day is also a time to put our political differences aside and to unite to reflect on times past, present, and future. Remembrance Day is a time to celebrate the fortitude and determination of all those who have served our country, the love of country. It is a time to think of those who are currently serving in the military, to protect the fundamental democratic rights and values that are so dear to us as a nation and we often take for granted. It is a time to reflect on the price of peace. On a personal note, Remembrance Day is a time for me to reflect on the gifts this country has given me. My freedom as a child and my citizenship as an adult. I treasure this gift and promise myself I would be paid. How can I forget the image 
the turning point of my people's freedom in the First World War and the coming of age of Canada as a nation. And some 40 years later, the heart-wrenching Canadian sacrifice at the end. And months later, the heroic Canadian breakthrough on D-Day on the beach of Normandy. How can I forget the agonizing moments in the muddy trenches and fields of Flanders as immortalized in John Frederick Cole? I love Canada. It is my country. I love the strength and bravery of its men and women in peacekeeping missions around the world or in actions in the field of battle. To our veterans, to our legion, to our men and women in uniform, and all those involved in protecting our communities and our freedom, I salute you. We are proud of you. Thank you.
I'd like to um, mention a program change. We're looking for programs uh, following um, the reading of Flanders in Flanders Field by Nancy Shipley. We will have the last post in Reveille prior to uh, the placing of the wreath. At this time, I'm just going to announce the program, the remainder of the program, so, um, and, and then we'll go from there, and I won't be getting up anymore. I'll be sitting down and going to. Um, before I introduce to you uh, Corporal Ray Dean uh, Fonarolo, uh, following her address, we will have an immediate song, Amazing Grace, and we'll have, which will be by the CHSR, it will be a special bag type soloist Jill Hennigan. So this would be really neat. This would be my father's very favorite song. And uh, he requested that uh, his program. And it was very really touching. So this is the one that always gets tears. Following the intermediate song, we'll have the Supreme Sacrifice by Cynthia Ellison. You're not here. Is that better? Okay. We'll have the Supreme Sacrifice by Cynthia Ellison. And then in Flanders Fields will be uh, read by Nancy Shipley. And I'd like to announce that there will be no march up for the cenotaph. Um, we will have the, uh, the replacing the wreath uh, uh, ceremony here uh, today. So we don't have to go out into the weather. Um, at, uh, after uh, Nancy uh, does a rendition of the in Flanders Fields, I'm going to turn the time over to uh, Kia Linda Kelly, and she will announce the program from there. It is with great pleasure that I have this opportunity to introduce to you Corporal Ray Dean Fonarolo. Her folks were Reno and June Fonarolo, wonderful, wonderful people, and a tribute to this community. And they were special friends of mine, and I really, really enjoyed their friendship. And a lot of you remember uh, June, especially worked at K&T Confectionery, and uh, a lot of you, like me, got your popcorn and hot dogs from her many, many times. And um, great people in this community. Corporal Ray Dean Ponerolo was born in Carson and raised in Carson and Levitt area. She is currently serving with the 20th Independent Field Battery in Lethbridge, and she served in many places in Canada, and served for four years in Germany, and has completed a tour of duty in the former Yugoslavia. I like now welcome Corporal Fornarolo and give her the podium at this time. Thank you. inviting me to give this speech to you. Veterans of Canada, fellow Canadians and friends of Canada, Madam Mayor and town council members. 110 years ago, Canada sent troops, all volunteers, to four war, 7,000 volunteers. The story goes that when the Canadians arrived in South Africa, under the command of Sam Steele, the British Chief of Staff, Lord Kitchener was astonished by our size and our physical stature. Sam Steele replied, My apologies, sir. I combed all of Canada, and these were the smallest I could find. The Canadians undertook many grueling scouting patrols through the harsh terrain on horseback, braving snipers and ambushes. The cowboys and the Northwest Mounted Police from the Canadian West who had volunteered were especially skilled at this. In 1900, the Canadians were victorious at the Battle of Parkour. Our contribution to the Boer War came at a cost. 280 lost their lives. Five Canadians won the Victoria Cross. And trailblazing Canadian women served as nursing sisters, cared for the wounded and the sick. Georgina Pope was the first Canadian ever to receive the Royal Red Cross. The Boer War was a long time ago, but perhaps some here have a great-great-grandfather or great-great-grandmother who served. 
These soldiers were the first in a long tradition of Canadians who volunteered to go overseas and do our part around the world. Ninety-five years ago, the great guns fell silent. After four years of bloodshed, the battlefields were silent. Great empires had been broken. Millions and millions lay dead. Among them, 66,000 Canadian heroes whose final resting place will forever be in foreign soil. And there were the wounded, 170,000, whose bodies and minds were to be forever scarred by the horror of war. All this from a country of 8 million. The scale of carnage, the new ways of killing on an almost industrial scale, for the tiny pieces of land where so much blood was spilled, the horror of life and death in the trenches made all people hope that this could never happen again. It was called the war to end wars. But it was not. It was called the First World War. Then 68 years ago, barely a generation had passed before the killing began. This time on a mass scale that saw civilians too as a target of war. We were a young nation, but we made remarkable achievements. Canadians served in the Canadian Army, the Royal Canadian Navy, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and with other Allied forces. Thousands of young Canadians fought from 1939 to 1945 on the battlefronts of the world. They were there to defend the United Kingdom when it appeared that Nazi invasion was imminent. They fought valiantly in the unsuccessful attempt to defend Hong Kong against the Japanese. At Dieppe, we bore the brunt of a daring but fateful raid against the enemy-controlled coast of France. Above all, they played their part in two great campaigns. They fought for 20 months in Italy and were in the front lines when the Allies returned to continental Europe on D-Day in 1944. They brought honor and a new respect to their country. Most of all, they helped to win the struggle against the tyranny and oppression which threatened to engulf the world. It was for our freedom that these young Canadians fought, and it was for that freedom that many of them died. More than one million Canadians and Newfoundlanders served in the Second World War. Of these, more than 45,000 gave their lives, and another 55,000 were wounded. Countless others shared the suffering and hardship of war. Sixty years ago, eight years after World War II, Tensions between the two Koreas gave, it grew to a climax, and on June 25, 1950, as with the two world wars that preceded Korea, Canadians volunteered for military service far from home. More than 26,000 Canadians served in the Korean War, including sailors from eight destroyers and airmen who took part in many combat and transport missions. The names of the 516 Canadians who died in service during this conflict are inscribed in the Book of Remembrance in the Peace Tower in Ottawa. We all remember 9-11. Once more, the Canadian military responded to threats of terrorism, and Canada would soon play a role in the ensuing international efforts to battle terrorism and help bring democracy to Afghanistan. Canada's efforts in Afghanistan have made a difference, but this has come at a great cost. More than 155 Canadian Forces members have died in the cause of peace and freedom in Afghanistan. In May of 2000, the body of a soldier formerly buried in Plot 8, Row E, Grade 7, of the Cabaret Rouge British Cemetery in Suchet, France, near the memorial of Jimmy Ridge, the body is the unknown soldier. The unknown soldier was reinterred in a sarcophagus in the front of the war memorial in Ottawa. Sunlight will only frame the headstone once each year on the 11th of November at 11 a.m. Who was this soldier? He may be one of those who believed the Great War was an adventure too grand to miss. Chances are he went for no other reason than he believed it was his duty, the duty he owed his country and his king. <clears throat> Did the unknown soldier die in vain? I say no. In honoring our war dead as we have always have and as we do today, we declare that he did not die in vain. 
the war showed us a lesson about ordinary people. And the lesson is, we are not ordinary. On all sides there were heroes, not just generals and politicians, but soldiers, sailors, airmen and nurses. They taught us how to endure hardship, show courage, and to believe in ourselves and to stick together. Our sailors, soldiers, and airmen who have given the supreme sacrifice, they are not missing. They are here. We remember them.
World War I. Father Randall C. Lee. Sergeant Henry C. Biggs. Corporal Charles F. Broadbent. Private George Cummingsley. Sergeant Horace J. Devonish. Lieutenant Alexander G. Dowell. Private Alfred Ayres. Private William Boucher. Private Sarah A. Giddy. <coughs> Private Arthur W. Jensen. Private Arthur C. Jackman. Private William H. Levitt. Lieutenant Albert C. Mountain Horse. Private John W. Roberts. Private William Sibley. Private Norval A. Sorensen. Lieutenant Sidney W. Thurber. Private William Woodward. World War II. Private Ray Adamson. Leading Air Craftsman George C. Aden. Leading Air Craftsman Benjamin M. Andrus. Corporal Bernard A. Asplin. Flight Sergeant Mark A. Reeser. Pilot Officer Forrest D. Billingsley. Flight Sergeant Winston W. Blackman. Gunner Walter R. Bowie. Sergeant First Class Melvin G. Braga. Sergeant Alvin M. Hunnage. Flight Officer Grant A. Cahoon. Sergeant Eldon H. Caldwell. Corporal Raymond V. Christie. Flight Officer Richard M. Christie. Flight Sergeant Edmund C. Crabtree. Gunner Franklin B. Curlis. Private Lord D. Davidson. Sergeant Arthur C. Davis. Warrant Officer, Second Class, Lawrence W. Davies. Flight Officer, Thomas R. Forsyth. Corporal, Merton B. Franklin. Private, Martin E. Goldberg. Pilot Officer, Elmer J. Hagen. Pilot Officer, Ezra M. Hansen. Pilot Officer, Milton W. Hansen. Gunner, Lawrence A. Hardwood. Flight Officer, Charles B. Haslam. Flight Officer, Paul W. Henderson. Pilot Officer, Frederick H. Heidinger. Flight Sergeant, Lloyd E. Holland. Flight Lieutenant, Eldon E. Pearl. Distinguished Flying Cross. Warrant Officer, Second Class, Joseph F. Law. Pilot Officer, Douglas T. Levitt. Private, George L. Lightfoot. Private First Class, Charles R. Libert. Purple Heart. Pilot Officer, Wayne E. Libert. Flight Officer, Merlin L. Mackey. Sergeant Philip K. Mackey. Sergeant Leslie J. McMurray. Sergeant Peter J. M. Modern. <laughs> Rifleman George W. Rawlings. Pilot Officer Dallas R. Robinson. Private Leslie Schofert. Sapper George H. Shutter. Flight Officer, Robert J. Shee. Flight Sergeant, Seth M. Thomas. Sergeant, George P. E. Tyson. Lance Corporal, Augustus W. Whitten. Bombardier, John W. Wiley. Flight Officer, DeVoe Wolf.
fields by Lieutenant Colonel John McCray. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing flies scarce her amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived. Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were we, and now we lie in Father's field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you for failing hand, we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. The poppies grow in Flanders fields.
The Motherhood of Canada, Phyllis Stapleton. Province of Alberta, Mandy Bretsky. For the town of Cardston, we are Maggie Coleman. Princeton County, we are reading Fred Lacey. Branch 170, Tom Wilson.
Ladies Auxiliary of the Royal Canadian Legion, Lil Fong. Second Lieutenant Darren Atwood. Corporal Charles Brown. <coughs> Canadian Border Services, Mike Gregson. Hardston County Emergency Services, Mark Turner. veterans, Robert Bysell. Lions Club, Andrew Strang. Club, 
Lloyd Pearl. Star newspaper, Gordon Greenfrist. and brownies. Anybody would like to buy some? 